Twitch chat, what's up? YouTube viewership, what's up, man? This is the Needed Podcast. This is episode eight. It's the eighth episode I've done, and honestly, I really appreciate all the support you guys given me, all the steam that this show has picked up and how it's been rolling in the community. I appreciate all you guys checking it out, whether you hit the like button on YouTube, whether you comment below on some things you want me to talk about, or if you're in the Twitch chat now, you guys are the reason this keeps going, and I really appreciate it. Uh, we don't have a club series to really talk about. Last week, we had my man Figgy on, and we talked about the Eagles club series and some of the things that people did right and did wrong in that tournament. But this week, it's been a quiet week in the MCS. Really no club championships. I think the Minnesota Vikings are still having a club series. I did see Madden League Ops post about that. I think it's going to be December 15th, something like that. I could be wrong about the dates, but there's a lot of things that are going on. You know, we're kind of right in the mix of everything. And this is something that we talk about when we talk about the format so much and that we're just so mixed up with different modes that we're playing all the time. Like, you know, when do we play salary cap? When do we play regs? When do we play draft champions? And they're kind of all different. And that's ultimately a challenge that we're faced with. But as pro man players that people are that are trying to attempt to win these belts and win these tournaments, they should be able to handle that be able to mix between a bunch of different modes but I know personally from experience when you go from draft champions when you have the 80 overall quarterback and the 80 speed linebacker and then boom all of a sudden now you're playing regs where you have the Deion Jones user or you have Tyreek Hill running down the field it's a little bit different and then you go to salary cap where you have the Yu-Gi-Oh cards where I'm putting power gems on my defensive linemen to get them to play better and I'm, uh, you know, and there's route chemistries to make wide receivers run routes that they can't run on regs. That is when it becomes a different problem. But like I said, you got to get over that obstacle. You have to be able to um, play every different mode. I wish they were spread out. Like boom, these two months you play regs. Boom, the next two months you play mutt. Boom, the next two months you play drafting, and so on and so forth. But I mean, we'll take what we can get, and got to get used to playing all the modes. And probably our favorite mode since it's been instituted into the game has been salary cap. I think it's really something that I believe every man player should love. Even the hardcore mutt people that spend so much time to get their mutt team better. I think I think there's really a spot for salary cap and everybody because ultimately that's where the fun is juggling where you want your weaknesses, where you want your um your strengths, where you want to spend your money on what position is more important to you than it is to the next person. And that's what we love about salary cap. And I think it is a place where everybody and salary cap is what the Mutthead League is ran on. And the Mutthead League is something that, that really is becoming a big staple of this community and becoming a big deal for all of us. And we're in the fourth week of the Mutthead League right now, which is a 12-game series, 16 of the best man players in the world. I was in this season. I don't really want to talk about my experiences in this season because – I did throw away a lot of games that I should have won, and I really did not come up big clutch in a lot of moments in the games. So right now, currently, I'm sitting here with a 3-8 and eight record. As we look at this, how the Mudhead League has turned out through three weeks, uh, Griff, you can put this on the screen. This is, this is pretty much uh, what the standings are, how everything's going, and, and – we're going to talk about what goes on throughout the uh, the next couple weeks. or the, This week is pretty much what's going to determine who's going to make the playoffs. And this is a $10,000 league, so it's not for anything small. And these are some of the best man players in the world. You see T. Davis, who is the Cardinals Club Series champion. Joe Rice, who is the Houston Texans Club Series champion. Obviously, Sirius Mo, who's a belt holder. Drenny's belt holder. Beast Mo Max, a belt holder. A lot of great players in here. And this is through three weeks. Some people have played... There are week four games. I play two of my week four games. You see, I'm, I'm down here. I kind of want to keep it off the screen. But I am three and eight. Did throw away a lot. If I look back on the games I played, I really feel like I should be sitting around, you know, six and five or seven and, and four or something like that. I really threw away a lot of games. And uh, I kinda, it kind of goes with, with not playing as much. I was not in the club championship, not getting all those reps, not really locking in on salary cap like some of these other guys really were. And they're playing better than me, honestly. I threw away a lot of games. So I'm out of the playoffs. Boom. But I did play Joke this week, and I did play Serious Mo this week, and I did want to beat them, both of them. So I definitely hurt Mo because he's definitely in the running right now between, honestly, pretty much everybody over here in Division D is kind of still alive. Chaos, even with five losses, is still kind of alive. As you see down here with five losses, 
Keynes is definitely alive, five and four, so he'd have to probably for him to make it, he'd probably have to win his next three games, finish with eight and four record. His point differential isn't great. And you see Drenny's looking strong right now with a six and three record tied with Mo. A little bit better point differential. And you see Beast Mall Mac and, and Joe Rice pretty much they just can't fall apart in the last couple weeks. I mean, Beast Mode has three games to play. Joe Rice looks like, I mean, he's got two games to play. It's a 12-game season, you know, and then only two of these people make the playoffs and one wild card. So the division winners and one wild card. So if you want to pencil in Joe Rice and maybe Beast Mode if he finishes strong, those two guys are in. And uh, you see between Journey Canes, Mo and Chaos still has an outside chance. So between these four guys, they'll definitely be fighting for one of the wild card spots. Pay attention to a lot of the games coming up this week. I'm going to talk about some of the notable games coming up this week because I want to make sure you guys tune into them. I don't know if you guys have been, all been paying attention to the Mudhead League. Obviously, some of you watch when I play and, you know, when Mo or, or some of these bigger name journey plays or something like that. But there's really a lot of games this week that are going to mean a lot as we go up here to the top. This one's even more intriguing. Because obviously you see Master Gamer and, and my man Cole, they're making me feel better about my record. <laughs> and Strafen's looking pretty dark, although he's not all the way out of it record-wise, but negative 88 points is bad. So pretty much you have both of these divisions are up for grabs. It's not like down below. Both of these divisions are up for grabs. You see Shakobi versus Drag. Both of them have nine games played. They both have three games this week to determine who's going to win this division. Uh, obviously the point differential is damn near the same. So I believe they actually have a matchup that's going to go down this week. That's going to be one of the bigger games of the week, Shakobi versus Drag, to see who wins that. Obviously, I've played Drag a lot. I have not played Shakobi this year. Uh, Shakobi is always good, but, I mean, if it comes down to a winner getting in situation with Shakobi, I don't know if I like him. At some point, Shakobi has to overcome his always folding in the big moments. At some point, he has to win an important game, and that's what we'll always be waiting for. So we'll definitely be able to tune in, regardless or not, a Shakobi big game is always worth the view. No matter where you're at, who he's playing, if it's a big game, it's going to be entertaining. So let's see when that game actually is. Boom, boom, boom. All right, these games got completed. We got T. Davis play Shakobi. That's Wednesday, 1 a.m. Jeez. So that's two, That's tonight. But who we have tonight? And we have Wednesday, Shakobi versus Drag. That's it. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Tomorrow night, 6 p.m. This is probably the biggest game of their season, Mudhead, between Shakobi and Drag. Will always be entertaining to see Shakobi play in a big game. So that's going to be probably the biggest game coming up on the schedule. Over here is a three-man race. Pretty much all decent point differentials. Pavon just is one a half game back right now. He has two games to play, so hopefully he go ahead and finish eight and four. T. Davis and Blocky, and Blocky, T. Davis, Pavon. This is just this is all just one big cluster right here. And we'll see who which one of these games. Let's view all upcoming games. Now, at this point, some people can play spoiler. This is a good game tonight, Chaos and Mo. Chaos still has an opportunity to win the game. Number two can make the playoffs. He'd have to win out. We'll see what Mo. I know Mo is thinking he needs to win the his games by a lot. So this, I'll definitely be tuning in for this tonight. That's tonight if you're in the Twitch chat now. If you're on YouTube, please, I mean, hopefully you see this before. But this game is going to be big time. Mo versus Chaos. Definitely going to be a big game tonight. Also tonight, Master Gamer versus Shikobi. Master Gamer is 1-8. Shikobi needs this win. You cannot lose a game to somebody that's 1-8. That's playing for nothing. So Shikobi needs to win that game. Then at night tonight, we have Mo versus Wesley. Once again, Mo's holding on for life. He's not. It's not impossible for him to catch Joe Rice because Joe Rice. Oh no, Joe Rice has two games left, so it's not impossible. So that's going to be another great game tonight. So you're going to have three games in a row that are worth watching tonight. You know, Mo versus Chaos, Master Gamer and Shakobi, Serious Mo, and then Joe Rice. So a lot of Mo tonight. Then we have 1 a.m. So you're just. This is just nonstop tonight, folks. So we got 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. Boom. T. Davis versus Shakobi. Huge game because both of these guys are looking to get the playoffs. Shakobi can't drop any games because he's tied with drag. T. Davis is right in the winning. Then, then that's the four games for tonight. That's a great docket. All four games are entertaining. Then we go to tomorrow. Blocky once again against Master Gamer. Can't give up a game to 1-8. Then, like I said, drag versus Shakobi Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, Master Gamer versus Strafe and both kind of out of the playoffs. And then we have Cole versus Blocky. 
blocking these that win. Joke versus Canes. These games are just at this point of the season, man. When you're out of it, you're just kind of playing spoiler. We're kind of all. I mean, I don't say. I mean, we are kind of all friends, you know. Especially how tight the man community's gotten this year. So it's not really not that much colluding. Whereas you let somebody win, so you got to kind of just play out all your games all the time. Like, if I'm going to play and beat Mo the other night, I got to play to beat all my games, even though I'm knocked out. I got to play all my games to, with the most integrity I can have because at the end of the day, all these guys are you know, my competitors, but I'm not going to one-up another person. I mean, none of these guys are my super close lab partners or anything. So, just got to keep playing. And this is what well, over here, Drag got to win this game. But Saturday afternoon, man, Pavon versus Drag, this is a huge game. Both good records. Both are looking to get in the playoffs. Blocky T. Davis right after that. So, Saturday, we got some great games. Sunday, Drenny Canes, 4 p.m. Pavanti Davis, Sunday. So, all these games, man, make sure you guys check out this schedule along. This is on Mutthead. Obviously, we all go to Mutthead. Go over here, Mutthead Season 7. This is the little tab right here. We got the standings that I was just on. And then we have the upcoming games, man. So, I'll definitely be tuned in tonight. Some huge games. Tons of playoff impl implications with every single game that's coming up. So, boom. That's definitely something you guys want to tune into. Shout out to Mudhead for going ahead and uh, really keeping this thing alive, man. I know Rockets at Mudhead has a lot of, lot of plans for competitive man. I mean, he's he's has the passion of competitive man more than anybody else that I've met, you know. And he really is doing a lot to help man. And that brings us into the Friday night tournaments that actually happened last week. Was the first one. These are for a thousand dollars a pop every Friday. And it's definitely something for us to continue to look at, man, because every Friday is going to give us something to watch. And Rockets took this idea. I don't know if he took it from the from the Fortnite tournaments that used to be uh, Friday night all the time. And uh, it's definitely something that's going to help Twitch. It's going to help grow the game. It's going to help get more eyes on competitive man. It's going to help bring all the great man players together and really compete. And ultimately, that's what we uh, that's what we love to do, and that's why we love the game. And the first Friday tournament, uh, Hollywood actually beat Clef, who two of the better players this year. Hollywood's one of the better players every year. Even though last year it was disappointing for him, uh, he definitely uh, definitely always one of the best players in the world. So congratulations to Holly for winning the first Friday night tournament. But now they're going to put the, all the sharks in the pool. I mean, he had a little fun with all the kitty games when they had all, all – they wouldn't let the Mudhead League players play in the tournament. But Hollywood had a lot of fun with all the kids, all the little kids and stuff like that. So once all the grown men are in the tournament this week, we'll see how he does. We'll also see how Clef does. It's going to be a lot of fun this week because all the best players in the world are going to be there, not just half of them. So we'll definitely be tuned in to Friday night. I'm definitely going to be playing in that tournament on Friday. So it's definitely something from here on out for the year. It's going to be something that really – elevates competitive men both on twitch on youtube every little content all the eyes that are on the best players in the world it is going to be a good thing for madden and we appreciate rockets and mudhead for throwing all these tournaments for Madden people that just like the competitive side we know we use mudhead a lot for you know looking up our teams all this info on what's the best card coming out what what traits these guys have it's really geared towards the uh you know the casual or just the mutt head type of player and that's that's where that website excels and it's great to have such a uh, dedication to competitive men within that website so it does what we continue to try to do is with branch the the casual mutt guy and the competitive guy whether the casual mutt guy has no desire to care about competitive men he still has to go look at this all the time maybe it drives him crazy maybe he's not interested but he still gets an eye on it he still sees you know, our faces pop up every time he loads up Mudhead to look at his team. And so hopefully that will give some type of branch between the, the casual guys and the competitive guys. And ultimately that is what's going to propel Madden to where I hope it goes someday. And Rockets is doing a great job of continuing to do that. So we appreciate that. And something now I want to get into something that is very passionate for me, very passionate for everybody in the Madden community, especially the top players that want to – make competitive men a career to make competitive men something they, they want to live by and continue to do every single year not necessarily stream not necessarily you know do youtube or do things like that they want to just compete they like the you know the avenue man where they compete against one another and try to win these belts and try to make live events and that's i believe a week ago the 
draft champions leaderboard open. First of all, let me talk about the, the draft champions to begin with. I mean, draft champions, I love the mode. I think it's a challenge. It's something different than regular men and not necessarily super different. But for me, being able to pick a playbook, you know, and make a little mini scheme within that playbook for six games, four games, whatever it may be. I think that's so much fun personally. And uh, I really think a lot of people get stuck on, on the playbook thing. And, and me personally, I am good at freestyling in different playbooks. I don't know if there's something you guys love, but it's definitely something that I enjoy. So I think it's a challenge and really makes you expand yourself as a man player. Now, obviously, a lot of us, you guys are locked into a certain playbook and you, you want to use that playbook. But the ability to pick one and, and run with it is something that really makes you better as a man player. And the random players is cool. I wish the the player pool was updated. I've always said draft champions should be the first tournament. One, when we don't know the game that good, we don't know what playbooks are amazing. We don't know what defenses are amazing. You're pretty much just playing all from scratch. That way you're forced to use different playbooks, search the game a little bit. And it's definitely a good thing for that. And I always thought Draft Champions should be the first tournament won so the players aren't this much different. Now, if the, if the tournament's this year, I, you know, I have base players with 70 speed where, bang, all of a sudden now I get Tyree Kill who has 94 speed or 93 speed, whatever it may be. He's so much different than anybody else. Whereas if Draft Champions was the first tournament in a year, hey, I can have my 80 speed base. But now the best card I'm going to get is only 88 speed or 89 speed. It's not going to be that much difference. Now it's pretty bad, and I feel like because it's the main mode now, this is the mode we're going to be grinding the leaderboards, I think it should be addressed a lot more. I think it should be updated almost weekly. Every new card they put in the game, just put a new Malcolm Jenkins card in the game. My favorite player, so I'm happy about that, but I'm not going to be able to use him in Draft Champions until pretty much the Draft Champions season is over. What aggravates me the most is because when there's not a tournament on Draft Champions, I feel that they update the pool a little bit more than when there is. Uh, but I don't think the pool is as egregious as it's been in the past. I think the quarterback round should obviously be, you know, there should only be 12 different quarterbacks you could pick from. And if you're going to put Michael Vick in the draft, give me some linebackers with a little bit more speed, you know. But ultimately, I think it, it, the, the mode is good. I have a lot of fun playing the mode. I, I've always been fairly successful with draft champions. Never, I've made two draft champions live events, but never really made a big run at one of these events. Mostly last year because protect the sticks, I gave up a fourth and twenty, and that I'm still kicking myself about. But I mean, I enjoy the mode. I think I'm very good at it. So, but the biggest thing with the leaderboards, mind you, this leaderboard I think is for a couple months. You know, it's not just one month. It's not just you know three weeks. I think it's for a long time. You know, this is what. I live for, I love the leaderboards. I love continuously searching and playing good people. Now, I, I always wanted to be a guy that just could play my head-to-head -head and still make money and still get a good stream, but to me, it's just it's just too boring. You know, I can't play kids. I can't play people that aren't good. I love playing good people that play the chess game of Matt and that I love, and that's what the leaderboards brought. That's what the leaderboards always made me the best player I could be, whether it was draft champions, any season, Matt, in 16, I was one of the best both in draft champions and in salary cap, puts top five in both these leaderboards. Every leaderboard that's ever meant something, I've been top five at regardless, you know. And it's something I sell. It makes me better at the game. Playing good people always makes me better, makes you challenge yourself, makes you improve your game. And that is what made me a great man player was playing the leaderboards, always playing the best players. And you are who you play, you are who you play against. And that's what the leaderboards can do for all you guys, you know, whether you're just a intermediate player, a moderate player, whatever it may be, if you start playing good people, you're going to improve your game. That's why the leaderboards are so important to Madden. Madden 17, there were three leaderboards, three. We had the first draft champions, boom. Then we had salary cap leaderboard, boom. That's when I, had, that's when I made Madden Bowl. That's when I won the Madden Bowl. Then after that, we came home. The Madden Challenge leaderboard. So there was three full leaderboards where the top four meant something where it really was important and imperative that you continue to do well in these tournaments. And that's pretty much what they have removed from Madden, whether it be even last year 
Last year they had the Madden, uh, what the Madden Classic had a little leaderboard, which actually was a good one. But now that I say that, I think it w- it was the way the structure of the Madden Classic was. It was tough to have a leaderboard. The top four didn't mean anything. Once you got into the top, I think I believe twenty eight only, then you was cool, and it was not worth because it was only twenty eight. It wasn't worth playing to risk your spot. So once you secured your spot in the top twenty eight, it was you were cool. There's no more need to play. Get into the tournament, be cool. Now that that was a little different because all the live events meant something to that tournament. There was only so many people they were taking from online. So I understand. But then after that, the club series is not a real leaderboard because it's so easy to qualify. You know, if you pick a certain team, you're only qualifying with those people that picked that team. So it doesn't have the same juice. And the last one was the uh, Madden Challenge. The only tournament last year where top four meant something. The only tournament where people grinded all year long. And when I say people, I mean the best man players in the world. That is the beauty of the top four, man. You keep your best man players intrigued, your best man players playing and playing and playing. You know, so you're going to have Kiv playing, you know, so many X amount of games, 500 games. You're going to have Joke playing 500 games. You're going to have Ghost playing 500 games. These are guys that don't want to play, you know, that aren't going to play the leaderboard like that because they don't need to anymore. They're not going to be playing your game. They're not going to be seen as much playing your game as somebody that, you know, now that there's no top four. And me, myself, I mean, I was always top four in every tournament, especially when it meant something. I mean, you locked in from from the beginning of the year, try to get to that top spot, really try to keep your your foot on the pedal and always playing the game. Especially for me, if I'm going to stream, it gives me something to continually watch. And regardless, obviously, you know, Joke's not streaming or Skimbo's not streaming. But if I'm going to stream or somebody on PS4 is going to stream, you're eventually going to be matched up with these people. And you're going to give people something to watch. These players that, you know, people tune in to watch the big names in the game don't have to play your game because you're not giving them any reason to play it. And also what the top four did was give the people that want to make competitive man a career, it gave them an avenue to continually get back to these tournaments. You know, if you were good enough, to win enough games and had enough time and devoted enough time to professional Madden, you were able to get into a top four spot. You were able to get that far in the tournament. You were able to avoid all single elimination, which is the downfall for Madden players. You cannot rely on competitive Madden if you continually have to play single elimination games. And what the top four did, it just allowed, okay, I want to be a pro Madden player. Okay, I want to play Madden eight hours a day. I want to get good enough at Madden. Now let me play these eight hours a day. I'm good enough to win 9 out of 10 games. I'm going to have a great record, and I'm going to be in the top four. I'm going to avoid single elimination. I'm going to avoid the fluke of losing one game to anybody, and I'm going to make a live event. So now I just made myself $10,000 for the year, made myself X amount of bet because I didn't have to play single elimination. Top four allows that. When I won Madden Bowl, I did not play a single elimination game until I already earned $10,000. And the first single elimination game I played was against Hollywood in Orlando. Because I was able to be good enough and grind enough to be top four, I did not have to play single elimination. That's a a credit to how good I was at the game and how much I grinded the game. There's no incentive to be that good at the game and to grind that much anymore without top four. It's something that's very important for everything for the whole season. Keeps everybody's attention on that particular leaderboard, on that particular mode, on that particular tournament that much more. Not only for a weekend or so throughout the year, but for three months throughout the year. And that's something I don't understand how they look at all the formats in the last couple of years and say this is a positive from the format. That really worked well from the format. Let's continue to use that. Top four is one of the best things that they have ever instituted in an MCS format. And they have just completely just forgot about it. You know, forget it. That worked well. That was amazing. That was intriguing for the community. But we're not going to do that anymore. So I don't know who made these decisions or why the decisions were made. But the lack of a top four is detrimental to the leaderboard and something that's really bad for somebody that wants to make competitive man in their career. But we'll see. It's been uh, probably a week and a half since the leaderboards have been out. So I don't know if they're going to make a change. Hopefully they do and just give everybody a little bit more incentive to really grind the leaderboards. Obviously you can see I'm passionate about the top four because it is the reason I have a bow and it's the reason why I've won so much money in Madden. But speaking of MCS, speaking of winning belts, I mean Las Vegas is a week away, two weeks away, something like that. And it's 
it's going to be a great event. I'm really excited about it. Uh, what they had everybody do, it's a completely free man event, which is really cool. I believe the man challenge was, I want to say $10. I don't think it was 20 but it definitely wasn't a lot of money. And it's definitely something that, where you went and signed up. Boom. They made, you know, you sign up, uh, obviously, a couple, maybe a month before or so on and so forth. And they have, <coughs> excuse me, probably 500 slots or so on for people to join. And they made you sign up before. Some people did miss the sign-ups. Didn't pay attention to it. Didn't take it serious. Because what we're used to in a man tournament is pretty much you can sign up all the way to the date. And you can even come to the door and say, here, take my $50. I want to play. That's pretty much what the man community has been forever, really. you know. And, and for 500 people to sign up is pretty obnoxious. I've never been to a man. The biggest man tournaments I've probably ever been to. Obviously, the man challenge. But... I don't think there's over 500 people at the Man Challenge, but in recent memory, even last year, I believe they were capped at like 128. The uh, Man Challengers in the beginning of the year, they were pretty full. I believe they filled out there, but even if it was capped at 200, I don't think they would have filled out 200. But for 500 people to show up to Vegas, I'm I'm really interested on how this works, how many people actually show up, and, and how many people missed an opportunity to sign up because they were a little late, and all these 500 spots were taken up. So it's definitely going to be something that I'm going to be tuned into. I will not be attending Vegas. I will not be attending the EA tournaments. And um, it's going to be a fun time. So if you're going out there, please socialize with the man players, man, whether it's your friends, whether you meet new ones, whether it's the people you talk to online all the time and you've never met. It's definitely, you're definitely going to have fun. You know, enjoy the experience. You know, you have to go into a 500-person tournament. So, like, you know, I'm probably not going to win this tournament. But you have to have fun. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. I'm sure they're going to have super security out there. That was one of the reasons it wasn't just like a walk-up and sign-up. They really wanted to do some background checks on every person that signed up. And, and that's a good thing. So, I can't really knock them for kind of how the registration for this tournament was, especially with everything that happened. They need to take every precaution available to who's going to show up at this tournament. So if you got a spot, please show up. Don't waste your spot because I know there's a lot of people that, you know, weren't able to sign up because all the spots were occupied. So if you have it, make sure you show up, have a good time, and play play to win the game. Don't play not to lose, play to win the game. That's That's some of the biggest advice I give people all the time. Vegas is definitely going to be fun. I don't know what venue it's at. I don't think it's at the same venue that the Vegas tournaments have been at in the past. But it's going to be a good time, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And ultimately, when we talk about the broadcast, we talk about, you know, what makes the broadcast great. What, you know, fuels, what makes it intriguing, not only for us Madden heads that are going to be in the chat regardless, whether it's Big Bird or or, you know, Bert and Ernie doing the broadcast, we would still watch it. But in order to really bring, the intrigue another group of people that really might not only be pulled in from the Madden games, but be pulled in from the broadcast, uh, Scott Cole, who in my opinion is fabulous, both at calling a Madden game, he's clever, smart, very well spoken, and does a great job calling the Madden game. He does a great job with the NBA 2K League. I've never watched any of his Forza Motorsports or anything like that, but I'm sure Scott does a great job at those two. I think he's fabulous. Obviously, enough can't be said about how good RG is as well, how much excitement he brings to the to the broadcast booth. Also, how much knowledge he brings from being a player to that one a man challenge, one a city. So he definitely has the experience that that is important when calling Madden games, man. Because I've seen, obviously, we watch a lot of events. Every one of these different MCS events has different people. And one thing that I don't like, I'm kind of cool off the ex-NFL player called Madden Games. I'm, that's not really my twist. But I could see how it's appealing to, you know, a casual fan that just likes NFL. Just likes, you know, try to, try to really bring – bridge the gap between the NFL fan and the Madden fan, and that's kind of what the ex-player does. So I see a point for it, but they're really not good, especially if they're not good at it. Uh, Greg Olson, when I won Madden Bowl, he called part of me and Skimbo's game, and he was fabulous. You know, he was very good. And, you know, I think you have to pick and choose who's good at that and who's not. 
But I, like I said, recently Scott Cole reached out to the Madden community and asked who would be the best broadcast options amongst the Madden players. You know, a lot of people said me. I mean, I would love to do it. I think I really have a talent for it. I really have a knack for it. I love talking about Madden, calling a game, and seeing how other people play the game and the decisions that other people make compared to the ones that I would make. And um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's not an option for EA or for me right now. So there are other options in the community that, that are fabulous, and, and you got to start with Zan. Zan's really put a lot of work in in the last couple of years to really, you know, do a lot for Madden, and he really plays a lot. I've noticed Zan from the beginning of the year has been streaming a lot, so he plays the game a lot, understands what's going on more than most people. And he's also very well spoken. I think that's one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, being able to articulate your words and really communicate with the audience. And like I said, Zan also has the uh, the knowledge because he played the game so much and he's had a lot of experience in the past. So he's definitely someone that would probably be at the top of the list for, for some of these MCS events. And then the next step for me, obviously, I got to go with a uh, big grocery and user who did all the millennial events back on one of the Madden Challenge or the, the Challenger events. I want to say they did one in 18, but they definitely did Madden 17 in the year. Between grocery uh, and and user, they're just a, a good combination. Grocery, very smart. Like I said, very articulate. And then you go with user, who's got the super country accent and, and is just a fool, is a real funny guy. And he also plays Madden, and he knows what he's doing. So th those two guys are very good, along with Zan. And like I, I tweeted earlier, I, I love Cole, shift guy Cole. I think he's he's very funny, does a great job every time he's asked to broadcast. So those are probably the four options for me personally between Zan, Grocery, and uh, User. Also, my man shift guy Cole, he's done a great job every time he's been asked to commentate or anything like that. Very funny guy. So hopefully EA does incorporate some of these older players. Definitely uh, really mix them in the group with the commentary. But – Although, like I said, I do believe Scott Cole and RG are fabulous. I do wish somehow EA would put them in the game to com to commentate the actual game. I think it would be a really cool opportunity for those guys. I think they would do fabulous with that. They've also called some of the best man games of my career and definitely some of the best man games in the history of Madden. And they do a great job. So if we can't get those guys commentating every single game, definitely those four guys I mentioned would be fabulous. Those are the people I choose from our community to broadcast some games because they all have a little bit of experience and all have been very successful with it from here on out, man. But we'll see what they choose to do. Like I said, I'm not in their plans, but I appreciate everybody that really, you know, said I would do a good job. It's something I enjoy. And I have done a lot, you know, both with Mudhead and with, you know, Nerd Street here talking about Madden. It's definitely my calling card. But we'll see what they choose to do. Hopefully they mix in a couple of these guys here and there and we can uh, see some new voices if Scott Cole and RG can't do every single game because as far as I'm concerned, I'd be fine with them doing every single game because they are fabulous, man. Oh, and I definitely got to give a shout-out to my man Bum, who was fabulous at the Eagles Club Series champion Championship, which was about a week and a half ago. He would also be another one. He'd probably be my fifth option. They could get him out there because the one thing Bum has that – not everybody else has is the streamer experience you know the ability to continuously keep talking about the man game also interact with the chat and keep that same energy for the entire time i think there's a lot of, of you know good that bum has from being a streamer and it really incorporates when he commentates man so he's definitely someone else that needs to be out there if they have the opportunity man also shout out to my man rico because he he flew me in some eagles tickets i was able to go to the eagles game this weekend and thanks to Rico, who is unmatched in the broadcast uh, capacity, uh, I think he hopefully he's definitely always in the mix for the, for the Madden events this year. So we'll see what they have in store, man. It should be fun, and that's coming up. California, I think, is the last week of January. I'm not sure the dates, and that's going to be a good time too. So we'll see what they do, but that's pretty much all I want to get to, man. The Mudhead is going to be a lot of games starting tonight, 10 p.m., so that's – Right now, looking about three and a half hours from here, I'm going to be tuned into those, eating some popcorn, having a good time watching those games. All week, there's going to be games. Like I said, check out mudhead.com. Hit the, hit the season tab over there. Check out the standings. Check out who, what games need to be played. You can see the upcoming games and when they're going to be played. 
and it's going to be something you guys can tune into and really, you know, see who comes out on top. And I told you, a Shakobi winning get in game, a, any big Shakobi game where he has to win is pure entertainment. So make sure you guys check that out because it's going to be worth every penny or well, any free penny. It's not, it doesn't cost you nothing to watch these games, but it's going to be worth all your time to check out Shakobi because it's definitely going to be a, a barn burner regardless. Like I said, I wish top four is back. It's not. So we'll see if they can change that somehow. Vegas is going to be a good time, man. Be safe, everybody going out there. And I, I told you guys my broadcast options. Comment below who you think would be a good broadcaster for these man tournaments going on here on out. Not much went on this week, but it's definitely a lot of stuff to talk about at the same time. This was the Needed Podcast, Episode 8. I appreciate you guys.